Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. All on earth with angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing, O heavens and earth, reply. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Jesus is the Good Shepherd, the one who calls us by name. As followers of Christ today, more than ever, we are invited to place our trust in the hands of the Good and Gentle Shepherd. As we prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we seek the Lord's mercy for the times that we have wandered from the path of righteousness. Lord Jesus, you call us by name. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bore our sins upon the cross. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the guardian of our lives. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, ever, amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, that the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our response is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter, beloved. If you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, 
because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins, sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, for you have gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be my heart and lips to worthy proclaim this gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, Whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all of his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger they will want to run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he's trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. One of, if not the most beloved images we have of Jesus is that of the Good Shepherd holding in his arms a tiny lamb. For most, if not all of us, Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. In every way we can imagine, this, that this, that this important, is very important for our good shepherd is our life. Of the four gospels, the gospel of John is endearing to us because in it we see these eloquent, loving pictures of Jesus that are recorded only in John's Gospel. In John's Gospel, Jesus is not only the Good Shepherd, but he is also the bread of life, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the light of life, the resurrection and the life, the bread of life, the water of life, and the way, the truth, and the life. In today's Gospel, however, Jesus refers to another image that kind of gets lost in our love of the Good Shepherd. Here Jesus says of himself, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. How could this picture of Jesus become more central to our understanding of our faith and of our, our relationship with him as our risen Lord? Well, his own words give us clues to answering such a question. The image of Jesus as the gate to the sheepfold first suggests exclusive access. Comparing others to thieves and robbers, Jesus says that only he has the right to grant access to the sheep. In the gospel reading, in what seems at first like a mixing of metaphors, Jesus says the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the, she of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Later, Jesus reveals that he alone is both gate and good shepherd. 
And consequently, only Jesus has the right, the authority, and the power to grant what he calls abundant life. This exclusive access found in Jesus, who is both gate and good shepherd, carries with it the reminder that many are thieves and robbers who have no concern for the safety, the well-being, and the life of the sheep. But not so with Jesus. He alone can supply both security of the gate and the presence of the shepherd. He alone is the gate of life in whom we find forgiveness of sin and life in all its abundance. So what is Jesus saying to us? Well, first we are to refuse to settle for anything or anyone less than Jesus. Many congregations, and ours could be included, are half the size that they were 20 years ago. Sadly, more young adults are leaving the church than babies are being born into the church. But in spite of all of her problems and shortcomings, the church is still the visible witness on earth of the living and loving Jesus, without whom there is no hope, there's no future, and no good news. The church is not a perfect destination, but it's the window to the one who is. Why is it that many emphasize the church's failings instead of the fullness of Jesus Christ that the church has to offer? In moments of despair, when life is at its worth, worse, as believers, we do well to embrace Jesus Christ and commit ourselves even more to him as our gate of life. And second, we must travel the life-giving journey found in following Jesus. For Jesus said, whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. Not only must we raise up Jesus, honoring him as the center of our faith, but then we must follow him. And third, keeping, keep listening for his voice. Jesus calls the sheep and the sheep know his voice. Jesus is both gate and good shepherd and knows our name and never stops calling it. In the days that we are experiencing, life's difficulties seem to shout down all the good gifts that God promises to give. But even when life is shouting pain, know that Jesus still calls your name. Keep listening for his voice, no matter what. And finally, believe that we can be abundant, full, and meaningful, and life should be that way. We tend to become what we think we are, and we live the life we believe that we want to live. So when Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, he was saying that to you and to me. So put your name there and read it to yourself. Jesus said he came that I might have life and have it abundantly. In these trying times, believe Jesus is the gate of life that opens to life abundantly, now and always, no matter what. May God bless you. And now we'll profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. We pray now for the grace and the wisdom to follow the voice of the Good Shepherd. 
Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. May the church continue to share Christ's message of salvation with people of every generation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I am the bread of life. For those who have fallen away from the church, may they hear the voice of the Good Shepherd calling them to return and partake once again of the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I am the bread that has come down from heaven. May the children of our parish who should have received their first communion yesterday continue to seek for Jesus the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. For our mothers, both living and deceased, especially those whose names appear on our altar, that God will bless and reward them for all their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Whoever enters through me will be saved. May Jesus Christ lead our faith community of St. Joseph to new and everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. May all of our deceased relatives, friends, and parishioners be welcomed by the Good Shepherd into the kingdom of heaven, prepared for all time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the sick and for those who care for them, and for all those who love them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. For all the unspoken prayers of our hearts, may they be lifted up with those of Mary, our mother, our patron, St. Joseph, and all the saints who live with God forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, Jesus the Good Shepherd knows each of us by name nourishes and protects us in this life and calls us home to eternal life in you. In your bountiful mercy, grant us the grace to always hear and respond to his call to salvation. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. There, for, therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Philip and James, whose feast day we celebrate today, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever, amen. And now we pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <clears throat> May the mingle with this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us to receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <laughs> P 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me safe for eternal life. The good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love's redeeming work is done. Alleluia. What the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise. Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise. Alleluia.